In this module, we will see how to model the behavior of a code in a succinct way. We will understand this through examples. Let us start with a simple example of an ATM. The ATM has a controlling code that determines how the ATM should work. Let us try to model it. Initially, when the ATM is idle, that is, there is no one using it, the code is idle as well. When a user inserts a card, the code receives the input saying that a card has been inserted. Now, the code jumps to a phase where it is waiting for a pin. Now, once the user enters the pin, the code determines whether the pin is correct or wrong. If the pin is wrong, it goes back to the idle state after ejecting the card. On the other hand, if the pin is correct, it goes into a phase where it is looking forward to a transaction by the user. Now, let us take only two simple transactions, either checking for balance or withdrawal. So these are the two inputs that the user can give. Now, if the user has asked for the balance, the code moves to a phase where it has to process something and give out the balance corresponding to that card. And that is what it does. So it prints the balance and now it gets into a phase where it's asking if the user wants to perform more transactions. If it is yes, the code goes back to this transaction phase. If the user says no, the code goes back to the idle state after ejecting the card. Now let's look at what happens if the user had given a withdrawal transaction. So it comes into a phase where it has to process this withdrawal input it will ask for the amount and once the amount is entered it will deliver cash if it is possible or if for some reason it cannot deliver the cash it will go back to this state and ask for some other amount now once again when it's in the more after giving out the cash if it's in the more transactions phase it will ask if the user wants to perform more transactions if it is yes it will go here if it is no it will go here People familiar with finite state machines would have recognized that these phases are nothing but different states of the code. Okay, So this is how we can succinctly represent the behavior of a simple controller of an ATM. These phases are called states. These edges from one phase to the other are called transitions. Each transition occurs due to an action. The action could be external. For example, insert card is an external action which is given by the user. Or the action could be internal. Print is an internal action. Okay. And there is one state which is designated as the initial state. So this is how you can represent the behavior of the code contained inside an ATM. This kind of a diagram consisting of states, actions and transitions is called a transition system. There are other names to it finite state machines, state transition graphs, etc. We will be using the word transition system in this course. Let me repeat, there are four components to a transition system. States. In this transition system, there are states S1, S2, S3, S4. Actions. Here the actions are A1, A2, A3, A4. There are transitions. So the transition is S1 on an A1 going to S2 is a transition. 
the state S2 on an action A2 going to S3 denoted by this H is yet another transition and so on. And there is one designated initial state in this diagram. The initial state is S1. So I hope the notion of a transition system is clear. Let us look at one more example. Now we will try to model the controller inside a vending machine. So you might have seen such machines in airports, malls, etc where you can insert a coin and then select whatever beverage you want and it will give you back the required beverage. Let us try to model the controller present inside such vending machines. As usual, when there is no use, the code is idle. When a coin is inserted, the code knows that it has to go into a phase where the user would select what he wants. Let's assume that there are only two kinds of beverages in the machine, either water or cola. Now, depending on whatever the action is, the code goes from the select phase to W or to C. And once it's in the phase which remembers the selection, it will eject the required beverage. So this is a simple representation of the code. There are more complicated details which have been hidden and we will see later during the course how to incorporate the details. But as you see, this is a succinct representation of the behavior of the code inside a beverage vending machine. Now we have seen two examples of transition systems. Let us define some terminology. So if in a transition system, there is a state with no outgoing transitions, such a state is called a terminal state. Just remember this. An execution of the transition system is a sequence of transitions which is either infinite or it is finite and ends in a terminal state. Let us look at these example executions. S1 going to S2, S4, S2, S4, S2, S4 and so on. So one of this execution represents the behavior that starts from S1, goes to S2, then keeps looping around between S2 and S4. What is this? The second execution is S1, S2, S3, S4, S4, S4 and so on. This execution represents the behavior that starts at S1, goes to S2, goes to S3, then comes to S4 and keeps looping in S4. Now the final one is a behavior which, which is like this, S1, S2, S3, S4, S2, S3, S5 and at S5 it cannot continue. Okay, So this execution represents S1, S2, S3, S4, S2, S3, S5. Okay. Let us now look at an example of an execution of the code inside a vending machine. Idle, select water, idle, select cola, idle, select water and so on. So this is one example of an execution. There are of course other executions. For example, idle, select w, idle, select w, idle, select w. This is one execution. The same, idle, select cola and this loop is an execution. So executions are ways of looking at behaviors of the transition system. Now, this is the transition system which represents the controller of an ATM. An example of an execution could be insert, wrong, insert, wrong, insert, wrong and so on. So this is the scenario when the guy keeps 
inserting the card and gives out a wrong pin. This could also be other users, not necessarily the same user. But this is representing the fact that um, um, the, the controller is an idle, goes to pin, idle, pin and so on. Yet another execution could be idle, pin, transaction, balance, more, idle, pin, transaction, balance, more, transaction, withdrawal, dollar, more, idle, pin, idle and so on. So these are the behaviors of the code. These are the ways in which the code undergoes its transformations. So this brings us to the end of the first module. Let me summarize what we have seen so far. We looked at a way of representing simple code using the notion of transition systems. A transition system consists of states, actions and transitions. It also consists of an initial state. We also looked at what executions of a transition system mean. I hope you understand these two concepts. A more detailed exposition of these concepts can be found in the book between pages 19 and 26. However, the expo exposition is a bit more technical and I think you should not worry if you do not get all the details given in the book. As long as you understand these two concepts, the notion of transition systems and the notion of executions in a transition system, I think you are ready to jump to the next module.